Hello, this is Neil from iPaintGirls.com, and now we're going to get into two-point perspective. And honestly, two-point perspective isn't really much more complicated than single-point perspective, but it can get very complicated once you get into uh, all the mechanics of it. Like, like uh, for example, doing a car in two-point perspective or something, it can get confusing. You'll see what I mean. Just some of the concepts can get a little little confusing. So I'm going to start with the horizon line here and now we do, now we need two vanishing points and what's easier is to have one vanishing point go outside of your of your canvas. So let's say this will be our canvas size. Right, so then we'll have uh, one vanishing point let's say here and one way over here. You want them kind of far apart, otherwise things look kind of weird. So the main thing to remember when, uh, we'll go through the basic concepts here really quick. The main thing to remember, like we'll do the boxes, is you don't draw a box like you do in single point perspective. You start with a line. So for example, what we'll do is we'll make one underneath, we'll make one on the horizon, and we'll make one above the horizon, just like we did before. And then just for the hell of it, we'll make one that's tricky, like a slanted object. Notice the scene's not slanted, just the object is slanted. And uh, so these are the guidelines. Um, I probably should have done those on a... well actually no, never mind. I'll do those on that layer and then I'll do like red guidelines on this layer. I'm using Photoshop as you can see. So what you do is you first you decide what plane you know the object's gonna... the main plane the object's gonna be on. And I'll show you what I mean because really um, We'll start with this side first. I'll show you what I mean by by decide what plane the object's going to be on. Don't worry, that doesn't actually look like that. If I go to actual pixels, you'll see that you know it looks much more smooth. It's just when when zoomed out, it looks kind of weird. So you what you do is you draw you draw you draw a line, and then you do your guidelines on both sides of or to each vanishing point, and then you decide how you know thick the object's going to be. So let's say the object's going to be something like this. Now once you have those two lines, and you still have a couple more guidelines to make, you have to draw this line to this, you know, guideline to that one, and then this one over to here. And then notice where where they meet up, then that makes the top, you know, your top square. And actually I'm going to make this layer uh, above it and choose black. This way what I could this way I could go over those lines really you know like this and that way when I delete that guides layer they'll we'll just see the box. Like so. And so how I'm doing this I have the line tool then up here make sure this box is checked. Fill pixels. That way it just makes you know pixelated lines. And then I have to do these lines really quick. So that's that's the idea, and you do the same thing when you do the other boxes, and I'll show that in just a second. But I wanted to demonstrate something that what you decide what I mean by what plane it's on. Imagine there's there's three planes, but really there's only two planes. You have to really decide where you're going to draw something. That's this plane here. We'll call this the right plane, and then the left plane, which goes back into this vanishing point. So the planes correlate with the two vanishing points, and so let's say. Um, I'm going to draw something on this plane here. So I'm going to start here. I'll draw a line. Oops. I meant to hit uh, select. I hit the wrong key. So I'm going to come up, let's say, like so. And I'm going to go back to my guides layer. And now I know that the object's on this plane, so I want to run... Okay, I can't. I can't see where I'm way over here. So I want to run this to this vanishing point since the object is on this plane. And now I have the guideline to make my next line. Let's say the object is going to be this thick here. Okay, so now I have the object on this plane as you can see and I'm going to draw the line here as well. Okay, actually well, I must have uh, I got, must have got confused. I, this is supposed to be my guidelines. Anyway, I got confused on what layer is what, so I accidentally uh, drew that line on the wrong layer, but hey, whatever. 
So anyway, that now we can start seeing our box there. And then once you have the plane in which your object is on, so it's going to be, you know, like I said, it's on this side here. That, and so we went through that to put everything to this plane. This is where two point perspective can get confusing. You know, what if I had actually started drawing over to this line over here? Uh, then, you know, I might have got confused or something in what I was doing. But now I can draw the guidelines over here as well because what these guidelines are for is for how far back the object goes on that side. So how thick is this object? How much of this object can I see? I'll say it's about this thick here. So it's sitting on top of there. And notice we're getting really close to the horizon, so we're not really going to be able to see the top of it. But what you would, what you would do, just like we did down here, is then you would take this line and you'd run it over there. But see, we're so close to the top, you're not, you know, you're not really going to see it. So there's no point in doing it. Uh, the line would just pretty much be flat anyway, so I'm just going to leave it like that. But if it was this, if this box, if this was lower down, then you know we'd see a lot, we'd see a lot more of the top of this box and some of the top of this box. Right. So hopefully that's making sense. Now with this diagonal line, draw. Oops. I meant to pick red. Notice that these two lines here, because of the way it's angled, are barely giving it any shape at all. These lines will give it a lot of shape. All right, and then you would decide on the thickness, and notice that, just like before, the line will stay parallel to that line there. As you can see, and I'm thinking that it'll probably be about this thickness, but we'll see. First, we'll then go and make another line from that corner down to here. And then I'll pick black again. And notice this line is going to be parallel. This line will be parallel to this line here. So actually what I need to do is um, I need to draw another guideline from over here to make sure that it's proper. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea, right? Hopefully I'm explaining this correctly, because, or well enough, because if this part is confusing, well, man, it gets way more confusing then. So as you can see, this object looks really weird because, you know, the way it was slanted. Anyway, so you can see because the way the object was slanted, I forgot to do one line here. Okay, so because that way that that object is slanted in space, it looks kind of funky because it wasn't quite, you know, it wasn't like these boxes here. And so that's how you do it. That's the basic concept. And uh, just for the hell of it, we'll go ahead and do this line that's above. So you start, you know, drawing the line to two points each edge of the line to the two points. That's how you start your object. Then you decide on the thickness of the object. And there's actually, um, this is where it could get kind of complex. There's actually ways to determine this exactly by the ground plane. So you draw a perfect square on the ground plane and then you project it up and then you can decide the exact shape of it and all that. Honestly, I'm not that good with all that. So I'm not going to try to show something that um, I don't really fully get myself. I'm not good at, and then I might, uh, you know, just screw it all up. So there's no point. Maybe I'll maybe I'll spend some time, you know, picking up on it more, brushing up on it, and uh, you know, if I feel I can explain it well enough, then I, I'll do that. But I, I will explain it with uh, like a car and stuff, and with like designing something like a car shoe, how you can project from the ground up that way. Um, and it's kind of, so it's kind of that same principle. So you just kind of apply that same principle here, actually. And I think it'd be pretty much the same. So notice, you know, just like before, we can see the bottoms of the boxes, and here we can see the we can see the tops because they're the below the horizon. And this one, we wouldn't see the top or the bottom. And just to demonstrate that, I drew the guidelines and the lines. Notice if I did try to bring those other lines back there, they go behind the object, so you can't see the top nor the bottom of this object because 
it's it's on the horizon line. But remember, if it was a window, then you could see the insides of the top or the bottom that's on the horizon line like we did with the single point perspective. The idea is pretty much the same, but we'll get more into that in uh, another video in part two. All right, so thank you for watching and uh, visit ipaintgirls.com for more free tutorials. Hope you enjoyed this so far, you know, going through the basics and understanding it, and let me know what you think. Uh, put some comments in there, and uh, cool, I'll be making part two.